Well, good morning. Uh, happy June 17th, 2022. I want to thank you all this morning for joining us here outside at the top of our headquarters building here in Center City, Charlotte. My name is Brad Koch, and this weekend is the two-year anniversary of the shooting that took place on Betty's Ford Road that took the life of four of our citizens. This time I'd like to turn it over to Lieutenant Brian Crum of our Violent Crime Division who will provide an update and a status of where we are with the investigation. Lieutenant Crum. Thank you, sir. Good morning. On June 22nd of 2020, our community members were gathered in the street in a Juneteenth celebration on Beatty's Ford Road. During this time, several individuals within the crowd opened fire, killing four of our neighbors, wounding five more, and impacting countless lives of both their family and other folks in the neighborhood. Over the last two years, CMPD detectives and our federal partners have worked relentlessly to try to find the individuals responsible and to hold them accountable. Many of our neighbors have come forth with information over these past two years and shared with us what they knew and what they saw, but we still need their help. Today we have an update on that area uh, that we'd like to share with you. Our partners with the Federal Bureau of Investigation have contributed an additional $30,000 towards the reward money in this case. That's to assist with information leading to an arrest. This brings our total amount of reward available for information leading to an arrest for an award up to $47,300. That's a significant amount of money in order to do the right thing. Anyone with information in this case is encouraged to call Crime Stoppers at 704-334-1600 or the Charlotte FBI Field Office at 704-672-6100. We really ask that anyone that has any information, regardless of how small they think it may be or insignificant, to give us a call. Uh, as we continue to put this together, our cases are built on very small details, and it's important that we speak to everyone that has any information uh, that may be of help to us. I'll take any questions you guys have right now. Um, one thing that I've heard from some of the families that I've interviewed is the kind of disappointment from the communication from CMP, feeling like they're not being kept in the loop on the status, not even knowing that there's a press conference today about the update of the anniversary. What is your message to those families that feel significantly out of the loop with the status of this case? Well, I apologize that they feel that way. Uh, we do our best to keep our families updated in the loop. Um, as you can imagine, sometimes it's difficult when we have multiple families. They all want to be contacted on different schedules. Some families want to hear from us routinely and we speak to them frequently. Some uh, don't want to hear from us at all until we have a significant piece of information. And, and sometimes, you know, if we come up short in their expectation, um, we need to do better and we'll work on that. So uh, we've reached out to everyone recently uh, because of the anniversary coming up and we'll continue to do that going forward. Thank you, about this case? What is it about this case? There's so many people that were at this event. What is it about this case that makes it so you know, I, I think it's a couple of things. Uh, number one, there are so many people and there's so many moving parts is that it takes a lot of information to really understand the total picture. I think it's also difficult because sometimes when people have information that they, uh, you know, in a case, you know, if we have one witness, you know, a suspect, and that's it, there's a lot of pressure on that one individual to do the right thing because they know no one else knows what they know. But when there's several hundred people out there, it's very easy to say, you know, you know, surely the police already know this information. They may assume that we already know it or they think, hey, maybe I'm not the one that's gonna step up and do the right thing because somebody else should do it. So there's a little bit less pressure on that uh, individual. Uh, what we encourage people to is don't assume we know things and that you know you can be the person that makes a difference in this case. Um, speaking from the families, I know one family of a victim, so they still have not gotten his personal effects back and started getting letters from his car company wanting to repossess his car. They say it's still in the CMPD can you talk about when those families might get those belongings back or when that would stop being considered evidence? Uh, so the short answer is it's, it's always going to be considered, considered evidence until we have an opportunity to go to court and have that released. Um, the vehicles, that's something that comes up routinely and we'll, we'll reach out to the family. Actually, I'll get with you afterwards to make sure we handle that. Um, sometimes there's issues with uh, insurance companies and handling that, but the actual personal property, we know it's really challenging because people want the personal effects back that belong to their loved ones. I would want the same. Uh, unfortunately, defendants are allowed the right to be heard on any piece of evidence, whether you know it's just you know 
a ring or very important keepsakes, uh, the law says that they have a right to be heard on whether or not that's critical evidence in their defense. And so when we haven't charged someone, that makes it even more challenging to do that. Um, but we'll reach out to that family and work through their other issues as well. There are other crimes that are unsolved in the city, so why does this one stand out as something that we every year get I think because the, you know, first of all, I mean, just it was a just senseless act of violence. I mean, so many people that were out there um, enjoying themselves, and you know, several, just a few individuals in this tremendous crowd um, decided to act in just such a, a, a way that's difficult to understand. Um, I think it also, because of the size of that crowd, it impacted not just our nine victims that we have on paper, but there's so many other people impacted by that. Their family and friends, the people who saw what happened, um, the people who are out there celebrating one moment and then find themselves in the middle of this tragedy the next. I, I think that that's why it's so important for us to try to find closure for our community. Can you talk a little bit about it two years later? Can you shed a little light about behind the scenes? What are you guys doing on a day-to-day -day or week-to-day basis to kind of make sure that this case so some of the things we've talked about in the past, um, you know, we've leveraged some of our resources from the ATF through the NIBIN program, and that's, you know, tracing shell casings that may have been involved in this case, that may be involved in others, um, communicating with, you know, federal agents, uh, agents within other, or uh, detectives within other units uh, within the city, um, conducting interviews actively, going out and trying to elicit information from uh, people in the community, our contacts, informants, things of that nature, and following up on those interviews, um, and then going through, you know, any kind of electronic evidence that we might gather. So it's, uh, it's a very slow process because some of this is very nuanced, very detailed. Uh, we often use the example that, you know, we have a, a puzzle to put together and some of those puzzles are, you know, a 25-piece puzzle. It's very easy to see the picture and to very quickly get to where you need. I mean, this is a 10,000-piece puzzle or more. It's This is a very large case spanning, you guys saw an entire city block, and there's a lot of different perspectives and pieces of information that we have to put together to get the overall picture. And it slowly comes together over time, uh, but we still obviously don't have that one piece or those couple of pieces that we need to successfully resolve this case. Would you say, uh, do y'all have any major leads or have made any even periphery associated arrests in this case? Um, Without getting too far into the details, I can say we have made some pro we have made progress. Uh, we're starting to see a picture of what happened. I say starting to. Over these past two years, that picture's come together. We have made arrests um, that are not directly associated with this event, but of individuals that um, we need to talk to, or we believe may uh, you know need to be uh, interviewed further, investigated further. So uh, I can't share the specifics of that, but we have made some significant arrests of what I would call internal to the investigation that have helped progress the the investigation. This case is solved. What's the next step? We're not going to stop. Uh, I think that this is part of it. Uh, the FBI, you know, the ATF, two great partners that are contributing towards the the reward money in this case. Uh, that's very helpful to us to try to generate more information. Um, but we're going to keep doing things to, you know, kind of shake the bushes, so to speak, and hopefully encourage our community members to step up and do the right thing. I know, I know it's really difficult to come forward and, and, and to say, hey, I'm going to be the one that tells about what I know. Um, hopefully the reward money helps, uh, but we're not going to stop. We're going to follow up on every possible lead we have and continue to work to generate more until we can resolve this case. And just to be clear, there's been no arrest of like a direct suspect that... That's correct. Okay. We have not had any direct arrests associated with this case that we can announce publicly. And what would you say to family members that, you know, what I hear a lot is like if this shooting would have happened in Valentine or Myers Park, that there would be more women. There, there's that feeling for family members. What would your message be to them? You know, um, having been in homicide for most of the last 10 years, it's really difficult um, in working with families, and I understand their frustration because as we work, you know, internally and we do all of these things, we can't really share the details of what we've done in the case with them. Uh, a family's first real, you know, their first real acknowledgement that something's happening in a case is when we make that arrest because that's the first thing that we can tell them without compromising the investigation. Uh, in a case like this with so many moving parts, so many potential witnesses, we have to be that much more guarded in the information that we share because we have to verify that what we hear uh, is legitimate information and not, you know, an echo chamber from ourselves. Um, so I think that makes it so much harder. Um, I, I can tell you that there isn't a case that I've seen more people step up through various agencies, our partners coming forward, just like today, the, you know, the FBI coming forward and saying, we want to contribute this extra $30,000. There has been so, such a tremendous effort to make a difference in this case. Um, someday I hope that we can really get into all the details of the family so that they can know over these two years what it is we've been doing for them. Thank you, guys.
Thank you very much, Lieutenant Crum. And as he mentioned, uh, anyone with information uh, can call our Crime Stoppers at 704-334-1600. You can also call the FBI Charlotte Field Office, and that number is 704-672-6100. No information is too small. No bit of information is too small, and we uh, really uh, encourage anyone with any bit of information to please call us. Now, as we mentioned, uh, Juneteenth is this weekend, and it is a day to remember and celebrate the day when slavery ended for all black Americans, and it is a significant day in our history and in our community. It is our country's youngest federal holiday when it was officially recognized by President Biden last year. Now, this weekend will be filled with parades, festivals, and backyard celebrations, and there are several events taking place around the city of Charlotte to include two that I want to highlight. The first one is the Juneteenth Festival of the Carolinas in the Plaza Midwood area that starts this evening at 5 o'clock and will continue throughout the weekend. And then the Carolinas Juneteenth West End celebration will occur near Betty's Ford Road and that will take place tomorrow in the afternoon from 1.30 until 7 p.m. Now as a result of these events there will be several road closures to include Commonwealth Avenue from the plaza to Pecan Street, Thomas Avenue from Commonwealth Avenue to the entrance of the public parking lot just off of Central. Avenue will close at five o'clock this evening and will reopen Sunday right before midnight. Now Senior Drive on the west side of Charlotte from Dr. Weber Avenue to LaSalle Street and Southwest Boulevard from Senior Drive to Quentin Street will close tomorrow at 8 a.m. and reopen about 9.30 p.m. We will send this information out, uh, not only in a press release, but we will also uh, make sure that we tweet this. So we encourage all that are going to be out and about this weekend to please follow our twiddle, Twitter handle, which is CMPD News, and we will post all road closures there. Now, in addition to the ones that I just mentioned, there will be many other events taking place in and around the city of Charlotte. Now, during these celebratory times, we want to remember to keep safety top of mind. Now, as a few reminders, with any big celebration that garner large crowds, we ask individuals that if you see something, to make sure you say something. You can either text 911 or you can call 911. And if you have not already done so, this is a great time to download the CMPD app that you can send in tips anonymously. Now, if you are attending a large event, whether at this weekend or not, it's always good to have a place to meet ahead of time in case you get separated. Now, as I'm sure you know, standing outside here, it is a little toasty, a little warm. This weekend will be no exception, so we ask you to remember to stay hydrated and dress appropriately. And plan ahead. As we mentioned, there will be street closings and lots of people out and about this weekend. Know where you're going and be mindful of those who are out celebrating. That time I will, this time I will ask uh, if anybody has any questions about this weekend. Are there any events going on in East Ford Road that you all are going to be monitoring? Specifically? Yes, certainly. I mentioned the West End celebration. That'll be just off of Betty's Ford Road uh, near Senior Drive, West Charlotte High School, in and around that area. That'll be tomorrow uh, afternoon, uh, and there will be uh, officers there uh, in and around that event. Anything else? Well, I appreciate you all. Uh, bearing with us today on the top of our parking deck and thank you very much hope you have a great weekend 